The Indian Civil Service ICS, for part of the 19th century officially known as the Imperial Civil Service, was the elite higher civil service of the British Empire in British India during British rule in the period between 1858 and 1947. Its members ruled more than 300 million people in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh and Burma then comprising British Raj. They were ultimately responsible for overseeing all government activity in the 250 districts that comprised British India. They were appointed under Section 32 of the Government of India Act 1858, enacted by the Parliament of the United Kingdom. The ICS was headed by the Secretary of State for India, a member of the British Cabinet. At first almost all the top thousand members of the ICS, known as civilians, were British, and had been educated in the best British schools. By 1905, 5% were from Bengal. In 1947 there were 322 Indians and 688 British members, most of the latter left at the time of partition and independence, until the 1930s the Indians in the service were very few and were not given high posts by the British. Wainwright notes that by the mid-1880s, the basis of racial discrimination in the subcontinent had solidified. At the time of the birth of India and Pakistan in 1947, the outgoing government of India's ICS was divided between India and Pakistan. Although these are now organized differently, the contemporary civil services of India, the Central Superior Services of Pakistan, Bangladesh Civil Service and Myanmar Civil Service are all descended from the old Indian Civil Service. Historians often rate the ICS, together with the railway system, the legal system, and the Indian Army, as among the most important legacies of British rule in India. <laughs> Civil service <laughs> Origins and history From 1858, after the demise of the East India Company's rule in India, the British civil service took on its administrative responsibilities. The change in governance came about due to the Indian Rebellion of 1857, which came close to toppling British rule in the country. Entry and setting Up to 1853, the directors of the British East India Company made appointments of covenanted civil servants by nominations. This nomination system was abolished in 1855 by the Parliament in England and it was decided that the induction would be through competitive examinations of all British subjects, without distinction of race. TH examination for admission to the service was first held only in London in the month of August of each year. All candidate also had to pass a compulsory horse riding test. The competitive examination for entry to the civil service was combined for the diplomatic, the home, the Indian, and the colonial services. Candidates had to be aged between 21 and 24, which gave everyone three chances for entry. The total marks possible in the examination were 1,900. Successful candidates underwent one or two years probation in England, according to whether they had taken the London or the Indian examination. This period was spent at the University of Oxford Indian Institute, the University of Cambridge, colleges in the University of London including School of Oriental Studies or Trinity College, Dublin, where a candidate studied the law and institutions of India, including criminal law and the law of evidence, which together gave knowledge of the revenue system, as well as reading Indian history and learning the language of the province to which they had been assigned. The early nationalists, also known as the moderates, worked for several implementation of various social reforms reforms such as the appointment of a public service commission and a resolution of the House of Commons 1893, allowing for simultaneous examination for the Indian civil service in London and India. By 1920, there were five methods of entry into the higher civil service, firstly, the open competitive examinations in London, secondly, separate competitive examinations in India, thirdly, nomination in India to satisfy provincial and communal representation, fourthly, promotion from the provincial civil service and lastly, appointments from the bar one-fourth of the posts in the ICS were to be filled from the bar. Uniform and dressing Queen Victoria had suggested that the civil servants in India should have an official dress uniform, as did their counterparts in the colonial service. 
However, the Council of India decided that prescribing a dress uniform would be an undue expense for their officials, although no uniform was prescribed for the Indian civil service until the early 20th century. The only civilians allowed a dress uniform by regulations were those who had distinct duties of a political kind to perform, and who are thereby brought into frequent and direct personal intercourse with native princes. This uniform included a blue coat with gold embroidery, a black velvet lining, collar and cuffs, blue cloth trousers with gold and lace two inches wide, a beaver cocked hat with black silk cockade and ostrich feathers, and a sword. Nature and role The civil services were divided into two categories, covenanted and uncovenanted. The covenanted civil service consisted of only white British civil servants occupying the higher posts in the government. The uncovenanted civil service was solely introduced to facilitate the entry of Indians at the lower rung of the administration. Salary and posts After the Indian Rebellion of 1857, the pay scales were drawn up. Assistant commissioners started out in their early twenties on around £300 a year. The governorship of a British province was the highest post an ICS officer could aspire for. The governors at the top of the pyramid got £6,000 in allowances. All ICS officers retired on the same pension £1,000. In the first decades of the 20th century, the imbalance in salaries and emoluments was so great that 8,000 British officers earned £13,930,554, while 130,000 Indians in government service were collectively paid a total of £3,284,163. They served a minimum of 25 and a maximum of 35 years' service. ICS officers served as political officers in the Indian Political Department and also were given 50 50% judgeship in the state high court and rest were generally elevated from the high court bar. The tenure of ICS officers serving as judges of the high court and supreme court was determined by the retirement age fixed for judges. <laughs> Ranks, posts of the Indian imperial civil service Central Government Secretary to Government of India Joint Secretary to Government of India Deputy Secretary Additional Deputy Secretary Under Secretary Assistant Secretary to Government of India Courts Judge of State High Court District Judge State Government Chief Secretary British Empire Secretary to State Government Divisional Commissioner Deputy Commissioner, District Collector Topic. Changes after 1912 With the passing of the Government of India Act 1919, the Imperial Services headed by the Secretary of State for India, were split into two, All India Services and Central Services. Prior to the First World War, 95% of ICS officers were Europeans. After the war, the British government faced growing difficulties in recruiting British candidates to the service. Fewer and fewer young men in Britain were interested in joining, mainly due to the decreased levels of compensation to be had compared to other careers. Confronted with numerous vacancies, the government resorted to direct appointments. Between 1915 and 1924, 80% of new British ICS candidates entered the service in this way. During the same period, 44% of new appointments to the ICS were filled by Indians. In 1922, Indian candidates were permitted to sit the ICS examinations in Delhi. In 1924, the Lee Commission, chaired by Arthur Lee, first Viscount Lee of Fareham, which eventually led to the foundation of the Federal Public Service Commission and Provincial Public Service Commission under the Government of India Act, 1935, made several recommendations. ICS officers should receive increased and more comprehensive level levels of compensation, future batches of ICS officers should be composed of 40% Europeans and 40% Indians, with the remaining 20% of appointments to be filled by direct promotion of Indians from the Provincial Civil Services PCs and the examinations in Delhi and London were to produce an equal number of ICS probationers. 
In addition, under-representation of candidates from Indian minority groups Muslims, Burmese and so on would be corrected by direct appointments of qualified candidates from those groups, while British candidates would continue to have priority over Indians for ICS appointments. While initially successful, the expansion of the Indian independence movement from the late 1920s resulted in a hardening of Indian attitudes against European officers, and further distrust of Indian ICS appointments amongst Indians. This resulted in a declining recruitment base in terms of quality and quantity. The All India and Class I Central Services were designated as Central Superior Services as early as 1924. From 1924 to 1934, administration in India consisted of 10 All India Services and 5 Central Departments, all under the control of Secretary of State for India, and 3 Central Departments under Joint Provincial and Imperial Control. From the 1935 Government of India Act to Independence The finances of India under British rule depended largely on land taxes, and these became problematic in the 1930s. Epstein argues that after 1919 it became harder and harder to collect the land revenue. The suppression of civil disobedience by the British after 1934 temporarily increased the power of the revenue agents, but after 1937 they were forced by the new Congress-controlled provincial governments to hand back confiscated land. The outbreak of the Second World War strengthened them again, but in the face of the Quit India movement the revenue collectors had to rely on military force, and by 1946-47 direct British control was rapidly disappearing in much of the countryside. The outbreak of war in 1939 had immediate consequences for recruitment to the ICS. The examinations in London were suspended after that year's batch 12 British and 8 Indian examinees had qualified. In 1940 and 1941, 12 and 4 British candidates, respectively, were nominated to the ICS. The following year, the final London nominated ICS candidates, both of whom were Indian, entered the service. Examinations continued to be held in Delhi for Indian candidates until 1943, when the last seven ICS officers seven examinees, two nominated, joined. By this time, the British government felt it could no longer rely unambiguously on the complete loyalty of its Indian officers. During the period of the Interim Government of India 1946-1947, a few British candidates were given emergency appointments in the ICS, though ultimately none of them ever served in India. <laughs> Independence of India At the time of the partition of India and departure of the British, in 1947, the Indian civil service was divided between the new dominions of India and Pakistan. The part which went to India was named the Indian Administrative Service IAS, while the part that went to Pakistan was named the Civil Service of Pakistan CSP. In 1947, there were 980 ICS officers. 468 were Europeans, 352 Hindus, 101 Muslims, two depressed classes, scheduled castes, five domiciled Europeans and Anglo-Indians, 25 Indian Christians, 13 Parsis, 10 Sikhs and four other communities. Most European officers left India at partition, while many Hindus and Muslims went to India and Pakistan respectively. This sudden loss of officer cadre caused major challenges in administering the nascent states. Despite offers from the new Indian and Pakistani governments, virtually all of the European former ICS officers left following partition, with the majority of those who did not opt for retirement continuing their careers either in the British Home Civil Service or in another British colonial civil service. A few British ex-ICS officers stayed on, notably those who had selected the judicial side of the ICS. The last British former ICS officer still serving in the subcontinent, Justice Donald Falshaw ICS 1928, retired as Chief Justice of the Punjab High Court now the Punjab and Haryana High Court in May 1966, receiving a knighthood in the British 1967 New Year Honours upon his return to England. Justice William Broom ICS 1932, a district and sessions judge at the time of independence in 1947, remained in Indian government service as a judge. 
Having married an Indian, Swaroop Kumari Gaur, in 1937, with whom he raised a family, he eventually renounced his British citizenship in 1958 and became an Indian citizen with the personal intervention of Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru, himself a former barrister who regarded Broome as a distinguished jurist and as much as Indian as anybody can be who is not born in India. Upon his retirement on 18 March 1972 from the Allahabad High Court as its seniormost puny judge, Broom was the last former ICS officer of European origin serving in India. Nirmal Kumar Mukherjee, ICS 1943, a member of the final batch recruited to the ICS and who retired as Cabinet Secretary in April 1980, was the last Indian administrative officer who had originally joined as an ICS. The last former ICS officer to retire, Aftab Ghulam Nabi Qazi also a member of the final ICS batch of 1943, retired as chairman of the Pakistan Board of Investment in 1994. As of 2018, some former ICS officers remain alive. V. K. Rao, born 1914, ICS 1937, a retired Chief Secretary of Andhra Pradesh, was the oldest former ICS officer on record at the time of his death in November 2018. Support and criticism Dewey has commented that, "...in their heyday they Indian civil service officers were mostly run by Englishmen with a few notable sons of Hindus and even a fewer Muslims were the most powerful officials in the empire, if not the world. A tiny cadre, a little over a thousand strong, ruled more than 300 million Indians." Each civilian had an average 300,000 subjects, and each civilian penetrated every corner of his subjects' lives, because the Indian civil service directed all the activities of the Anglo-Indian state." The ICS had responsibility for maintaining law and order, and often were at loggerheads with the freedom fighters during the independence movement. Jawaharlal Nehru often ridiculed the ICS for its support of British policies. He noted that someone had once defined the Indian civil service, with which we are unfortunately still afflicted in this country, as neither Indian, nor civil, nor a service. As Prime Minister, Nehru retained the organization and its top people, albeit with a change of title to the Indian Administrative Service. It continued its main roles. Nehru appointed longtime ICS officials Chintaman Deshmukh as his finance minister, and KPS Menon as his foreign minister. Sardar Patel appreciated their role in keeping India united after partition, and noted in Parliament that without them, the country would have collapsed. See also List of Indian members of the Indian Civil Service Civil Services of India